Let's also be real on the other side that the poor righteous teacher method didn't work because he didn't have no resources to build up nothing. You can't talk about building up a community, you ain't got no resources. Yeah, the, the only way the poor righteous teacher method works is if you have a community of people willing to utilize their resources to develop what they need to develop relatively free of charge. And that's right. not going to happen. Right. That's You right. need you need the master builder to be willing to build free of charge for free. You need the construction company or the, the materials companies for construction materials to provide those materials free of charge. You need the resource generators that pull the stuff out of the ground free. Of, you need all of these people doing things free of charge. But I will say this though. I think nowadays power and influence is a bigger issue than finances because of what you just said um, in terms of the amount of black churches springing up in impoverished communities. Now, yes, they are transferring the last vestiges of wealth outside of that community. But let's also be clear. They aren't making that much money. Those right. people are in there trying to become a name, trying to yes. get known. Yeah. The majority of them. Yes. Right. So the majority of them are not mega churches. Right. So that's where I go with that, where it's like, I, but the, 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 the threat here is what you spoke about earlier, that that preacher, that person that doesn't have any moral values, that is seeking the spotlight and gaining and craving a following. And there are yes. a lot of them out there. Yes. But to Dr. Ben's other point, I'll say this real quick. Um, churches don't need to my research correct me if i'm wrong last time i researched this was about 15 so years ago or so when i was thinking about becoming a pastor myself uh actually this is more like this is you know it's about 15 years ago now um churches don't actually need to be 501c3 to operate as tax exempt that didn't hmm. become law or that didn't become regular practice until the 1960s and 70s right around the time when everything seemed to change. Before then, and if you look at IRS code, unless they changed it, religious institutions that are recognized as such are automatically granted tax-exempt status. Now, well, yeah, that, so I'm, I'm reading this. I'm reading this in this um, charitable allies.org and this is june 16 2021 saying churches synagogues mosques and other places of worship are automatically considered tax exempt by the irs without filing or recognition of 501c3 uh status officially so, so the point i'm getting at with that <clears throat> is when a church incorporates when they register they establish themselves as a legal corporate entity they get 501c3 status Yes, they get additional perks with that, but they also tie their hands on what they're able to do. Yes. So you got to think about the trade-off that's happening in the mind of the church leaders when they're saying we're willing to give up our political and social power in order to achieve the minuscule perks that we would get other than the tax-exempt perks that we already have. Yeah. And if they aren't doing that sort of calculation in their head, then you got to look at how much due diligence they're doing if they honestly believe they need 501c3 status right. and then question whether or not you want to follow people that aren't going to do their due diligence on something as significant as legal standing. But even with that, that's another reason why it's so easy for politicians to just pop up in churches, whether, whether you from that community or not, because the 501c3 status the 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 we we are not a political entity but we can support political entities and political entities can can uh seek us out for support and we can take their money and we can do tax write-offs and all these things here but us as an entity we have no voice in that we have no real uh political social voice like we're not supposed to because it's not like churches of the past it's not like no it's not uh it's not like reverends like uh Dr. King and CK Steel you now in the past who were really some real OGs, some real ones, and who didn't didn't allow or they didn't have that position that was stopping them. They didn't, they had a, they had a moral ground. They had a moral ground and they were about the people. 
we far away from that now. We have a lot of we have a we the black America has just overall even taken out of the religious realm. Black America has overall has adopted and accepted trash trash ass leadership qualities mm -hmm. and trash ass leaders, and we keep doing it over and over and over now once again that's why it's so easy during political season for people to just spring up lily white woman and lily white man i don't know what just sprang up in the past are so chummy with them yeah it's it's all about the show and not about the grow and we talk about that all the time i think one of the things we've got to come to terms with as a people is the fact that we like to be entertained at the cost yes. of things yes. that we should yes. not be willing to pay for yes you know, or compromise on. And that's just the truth of it. It's something that I think the majority of Black Americans are going to have to struggle with individually and as a collective, this attraction to ratchet, this attraction to entertainment, not even ratchet, and just entertainment in general. Like this, like, I, I'm not even going to front... I struggle with it. I love battle rap. I love the creativity that comes with it. I love watching those brothers put words together, even the sisters. I love seeing that level of intelligence displayed and coming from people that look like me. But yeah. I got to sit down and really look at how they're choosing to display that. Right. The dudes is talking about killing each other and the chicks is talking about killing each other and fucking each other and fucking each other's men like we got yeah so and, and i'm i am i am conscious about what i'm consuming and i'm doing a a a daily job or i'm moving daily toward eliminating a lot of the negative stuff that i will be consuming on a regular basis especially uh the mo the music especially the music because i'm not watching tv that much now Really don't have time to watch mm -hmm. TV like that, but the music that I'm consuming. But even in that, talking about like just what we do as a culture and how how our morals as a culture is as a, as a people rather so low. So this is a this I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but this is a part of a comment by a, a white woman uh, on one of my videos. Um, she said, "I have a question regarding being black and being proud of who you are." That's how I knew I was like this person can't be black starting off like that. She says, "Why do you allow?" But now at the bottom, she says she's a white woman. Oh. So, but the qu the question is, why do you allow yourselves to be cast in all forms of media, television, movies, etc., with white people for spouses? Uh, does that not smack to you of saying, in order for you to gain credibility, you must be seen to be able to marry into the white lifestyle? Every time I see a commercial, for instance, I think, do black people not see what's happening here in real life? For instance, when a black and white marry. Is that white America attempting to make America less black? Uh, 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 white black America attempting to make white America uh, less white. But basically, just the, the top part of it is asking, like, why are we allowing ourselves to be portrayed in these certain light? And it's like, baby, well, she don't understand the Negro mindset, and that's the that's one of the things we've been working to explain with these breakdowns within these breakdowns too. Is this Negro mindset and and that's being a n i g g a, and you can stop saying the word all you want to, but if you got the behavior. But once again, black folk were conditioned to be to to have that Negro mindset, and then black people we cultivate, we continue to cultivate that mindset, that mind state, and the behaviors ourselves. And so, she's seeing this because from the outside in, to them that is the representation of what black people in America are. We know different. We know we see the commercials because we talk about it. We see the stuff. Matter of fact, just even past the commercials, we see all the content that black people are, are are in. We see all the stuff, but there's a good number of us who make excuses for it. Let's just be real. Good number. Hey man, where he getting paid, man? That man doing this thing. She doing her thing. Why y'all hating? They doing their thing. Let them do their thing. Let them eat. Let them get money. Let them do this. Let them do that. Let them, let them, let them, let them, let them, let them, let them. Not understand all those let thems aren't helping. All those let thems is more coals on the fire to help us degrade ourselves. To help our image be degraded. Yeah, but see that and see to really get into that, we would have to do another show on propaganda yeah. and image and all this other stuff. Um, but that, you know, like it, it's white people are funny to me. Yeah. Um, 
because they they always ask these questions and i'm not saying this white lady did it but i'm just in general they always ask these questions as if it's um revelatory like if it's something that black people ain't noticed or thought about before <laughs> yeah like, we know negro right. man said we know like they always trying to hit us it remind me of the bill o'reilly thing where he went bill o'reilly a few years back where he went on the crusade he was gonna help black america and black people needed to understand that the lack of fathers in the home was what was causing all and it was like bruh we've been so, having bro. these conversations for the last 50 60 years but you ain't concerned about the lack of fathers in the white homes, though. Well, you know, every now and then they get on their crusade where the, they whiteness show up and they got to try to save some shit. And we, yeah, well, the, we the easiest thing to attempt to save. Yeah, well, if this young lady is watching this, we know. We know. <laughs> we know. I mean, we, just, just, we know. But yeah, but, it, it, you know, we were talking about it earlier about the, 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 the lady who was twerking in, in the in the in the school and she, she was yeah yeah yeah, out of yeah. The, the the late great ti and 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 um well well you rappers in atlanta are defending a lot of the criminal activity all right but that goes back to that influence power conversation we had earlier matt but matt people malcolm malcolm x told us we y'all weren't listening then you still ain't listening now these entertainers these athletes and entertainers are not our leaders like uh I, I respect the comedian Ali Sadiq because uh, he was on he was on the eighty five South show and that's what he was talking about. It's like there's like it's it's stupid as hell for athletes and entertainers and celebrities to be our leaders to really be speaking for us on topics like we have people who've dedicated their lives and their whole careers to being scholars in specific fields who get looked over and black people don't care about them. Because they care about the celebrity. Going back to what I was saying earlier about Future showing up in Tallahassee to the projects of Tallahassee. And everybody's excited about Future. Everybody loves Future, but they don't give a damn about the people who are coming out on a daily basis to try to help them get resources and feed them. Yeah, I mean, we had this conversation. We was talking a couple of years back to one of the, uh, a black, uh, a black, doctorate of economics who was talking about how the black economics organization professional organization was trying to get established and gain some level of respectability in the black community. Um, and I won't, you know, not getting into the details of it, but one of the things that I think is, is, is significant about that conversation is yet and again, you have, these are people who dedicated their entire life to studying money trends on a macro level, economics, resource management, and when we have questions about economics, they ask Angela Yee. We right, that's exactly where I was going. <laughs> we ask Angela Yee, not this professional body of hundreds to thousands of people that have dedicated their lives to studying the shit. Hey, influence, influence. Steve, look, Steve Harvey has become a a relationship guru. Like all these people on it, like, like bro, I'm 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 watching these videos on on YouTube and black people. We're talking about fixing our relationship issues. We talk about, it. but I don't think you're not serious about fixing relationship issues. Calling into some random person on YouTube because they have a show that you like. That person isn't qualified to help you. Like when you called into Kevin Sam, that man told you I'm an image consultant. So call at your own risk. If you want to call into an image consultant about relationship, hey, do you? Do you? And no shade to him, but he was like, I, I loved, I loved when he used to tell people, hey, he used to ask the girls, do you have a father? Do you have men in your life, men of influence in your life that you respect and, and you have a great relationship? Yeah. They're like, yeah. So why are you on the internet talking to some random dude? Getting getting advice from some random dude on the internet when you got a father right there who loves you and cares about you. And I don't funny, know you. The funny part about that is you're getting advice from one random dude about another random dude. <laughs> right. Instead of going to your know. source. <laughs> Instead of going to your to, to the men in, because of influence. Because Kevin Samuels had the influence. Anybody with the influence will be propelled to the top. Black people love them no matter how bad we're doing. 
Just like with Joe Biden talking to Cardi B. She gonna talk to Cardi B represented black people. And now uh, Cardi B is a political analyst. How did that happen? Black. Because because she's popular enough, she got enough influence in black people. Hey, let it happen. But going back, like what you're saying earlier, the, the girl going to the high school and twerking and, and twerking on the um on the high school boys, and then that being defended, that being defended by men and women, they're like, well, hey, they shouldn't invite it. Yes. So you were you was at Rickers. You remember it was my it was two thousand and it had just crossed over two thousand and two. You remember um because this is it's gonna line up with this with what I'm talking about about the girl twerking. You remember that we had a, a an assembly and they invited the junior strikers. Mm. And and everybody know when you invite the strikers or the junior strikers, what kind of they loop dance and slanging meat all over the place. Mm. So adults, adults. Adults, adults, book these men, book, book these young men to dance in front of high school full of young high school girls and boys. Knowing the boys don't want to see it, but they booked them anyway. Soon as the boys started dancing and slanging meat, those girls went crazy. And what did the, the, adult, the adults got mad, shut it down, and scolded the children. And I'm sitting there the whole time. I'm they taking us back to class, and I'm sitting there. I'm hoping the teacher call on me because my question is, why are you mad at a bunch of high school students for doing what they were supposed to do when y'all adults book these boys? Same thing. You adults book this book this busted chick. Mm -hmm. Y'all booked her. You booked her. You booked the once again the adults are failing the children because even the adults are captured by the influence. Of these so-called celebrities and these people who we've just made leaders. Everybody want to be with the group. Don't matter if the group's right or wrong. If you gotta, we know this though. You know you've had a YouTube channel for long enough. Now you know how yeah. this goes. The bigger your audience gets, the faster it grows. Hey, look, <laughs> hey man, do y'all own research. Look, <laughs> hey, I want y'all to look. We're gonna do stuff.